Grandpa Newby reporting for duty, and as you know, I'm in a series, Try Something New. Modern Warfare 3 is about to be tucked into bed, and in the time we have left, just a few weeks, maybe you should try something new to keep it fresh. The 50 caliber GS just got a buff slash nerf. It got a buff to the damages and nerf to the ranges, and I thought since I've been hip firing with the OG pistols, the P890 and the X12, why not? try hip firing with the 50 GS. Here's the configuration I used. First, 13 round magazine. That's a must. I realize there's a lot of red in the handling, but it's a must. Mobility is still okay, just under 5. Sprint speed, ugh, on the slow side, at 5.5. Tactical sprint speed is okay. ADS movement speed's only at 3. We're not going to use that too much, and I'll tell you why here in a second. ADS speed is a glacial pace for a pistol at 340 14 milliseconds, but that really doesn't matter because 90% of the time, if not more, we're going to be firing from the hip. Now, what kind of damage do we get? Well, 187 to the head, 150 to the upper torso. So those are going to be one-shot gacks, even on a fully healthy enemy. Lower torso is 127, upper legs 116. So if the enemy has a paper cut, probably going to take them out. Now, the effective damage range is 11.4 meters, and that's because of the configuration configuration. It was significantly less than that, but this configuration pushes it up higher. The bullet velocity also has been pushed up higher to 522 meters per second. That gives us a hit scan range of about 26 to 27 meters, and that means that the enemy is at 26, 27 meters. The shot will be like a point blank shot. It'll be a hit scan. Rate of fire is 200 rounds per minute. Now, the important number for us is going to be the accuracy, and you can see that the hit fire spread is really low at 1.4 degrees per second, but the hip fire spread max is at 14.3 degrees per second. And I almost just gave up on this and said, I'm not going to try it with a number like that. I'd be better to hip fire with a sniper rifle, but I went ahead and tried it anyway. 14.3 means when you're moving, you're not going to get that tight 1.4. You're going to get more like the 14.3. We're going with the hair trigger, and that gives us the 200 round per minute rate of fire. I didn't know notice any problems with it. It hurts the sprint to fire speed, but it's at 80 milliseconds, so that's pretty quick. The GS50 wood grain grip, and that helps with the sprint to fire speed and also the ADS speed. Recoil, we don't care about because we're shooting from the hip. We're going to put a laser on it, the X10 Sidearm L400, and that helps significantly with both the minimum hip fire spread. It gets it down to 1.4. That's pinpoint. If you're just standing still, if you're laying down on a hard point or trying to cap a flag, that's going to be really, really accurate. The max, it brings it down to 14.3 degrees per second, which is awful, but that awful didn't translate into awful in the actual games. And finally, the SA long shot 50, that increased the damage range 33% and the bullet velocity by 11%. It helped with the minimum hip fire spread and it hurt the maximum, but I wanted the range. So the maximum was already bad. There's not a lot you can do to improve it. So I just went with it. Speaking of going with it, let's go into the shooting range and see how this thing does. Okay, so remember we're hip firing. This is 10 meters, so it should work good for us. And it took two shots. This is more like 25 meters. Let's see if we can hit it. Look at there. It looks like it's centered, but it took about four shots to do it. Four or five shots. Aim down sight. One, two, three. Okay. And then ADS right up at 10 meters. It's going to be good. So let's take the 50GS hip fire model, and it's a hand cannon. You're going to love this. Onto the field of honor. See how it did for Grandpa. See what it did to Grandpa's sometimes unfriendly, if you can believe it, enemies. Let's go. All right, let's get into this. The 50 caliber, 50 caliber hand cannon, like a desert eagle. Boom, boom. Triple kill to start the game. First time out of the box. This thing is absolutely amazing. And you can see how the crosshairs, see that? They got down to almost nothing when you stand still. But when you're running, looks more like a sniper rifle's crosshairs. See? And the first set of GACs. 
full streaks. We'll throw this IMS thing out there so nobody kills it with a Granado. Weapon is powerful. It shoots straight. Put the dot on somebody, they disappear. Of course, every once in a while, Grandpa might disappear too. And the Purple Veil Nun is finally on my team. Usually I have to fight against her. She's calling in curses and possessions and even a little jump shot there on old redhead there. There's a guy in diving gear. Or is he gonna go diving? Whoop, 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 whoop. Grandpa shoot at his own team. It'd be a lot easier to get the challenges done if you could gack your own team, wouldn't it? That's what you call free for all, though. That's why I like it so much. You see someone, you gack them. So, as you can see, this thing absolutely deletes people. And I was shocked because the 14.3 degrees per second on the moving hip fire, pretty, pretty nasty. Even Michael Myers had to say, hello. Of course, we all know Michael Myers will be back for Halloween 100, version 185 or 2000 or whatever. Or is that Jason? I don't even remember which. I don't remember which villain is which. Now, I just know Freddy Krueger is Nightmare on Elm Street. I know you have Jason and you have Michael Myers. I went to Halloween 1 as a teen. I remember that. Then we were excited when Halloween 2 came out. And then by Halloween 3, we didn't even go to it. You know, they were all the same. There we go. Whoa. That was a double kill there. And a triple kill. The thing just deleted that guy. He deleted Diver Dan there. I thought 14 rounds was enough. I never ran out and was shooting blanks at shooting nothing bullets at people. I got full streak so many times in this first game, it was pretty amazing. The guy was a bad guy. It was pretty tight, tied up. And if somebody tries to run past you, well, there's a little red riding hood, and her boyfriend, Gax, the grandpa, sells me the farm. If somebody's running past you, you pull the trigger, they're gone. Now, there weren't any of those dual reclaimer guys in this first game. But I absolutely abused them and other games. So I think the Bryson 800, better than the dual reclaimers as far as getting around and gacking and fast gacking. I think the 890 is equal to it, and I think this is equal to it. I mean, I was able to, look at there, move and gack, move and gack. And there we have big old... Tinker Toy head there. We have a Muppet on our team. Stick them and shoot them. And then huh, buy the farm. So it still is a pretty close game. Grandpa felt an immense responsibility to pick up the, the tags for the team. I mean, we went from pretty far down. Now we're pretty far down again. But we're going to continue to persevere, as they say in Outlaw Josie Wales. Also continue to buy the farm. We have a guy running back to his Muppet slot. At least he went and got the tag. Michael Myers again. Come on, Michael. Get the tags. We're within one with two gacks left now. Come on. And we lost. But I thought that the weapon did fairly good, so we're going to try another. I do not like this map. It gives me combat flashbacks for some reason. Grandpa is dangerous when he's on this map. Ooh. There we go. The headshot. Gathering up the tags. 
Now, somebody said something about uh, they wish I had my lobby of bots on, I think, the short version I did of this. Well, let me tell you, feel free to join us. I mean, you're always welcome to join us on the streams. Now I have four people that have confirmed join that said I had easy lobbies and comments, and they all found the lobbies weren't too easy. In fact, they get, pretty much got destroyed when they joined up. Reason for that is the more you win, the harder the lobbies get. The better you do, the hard, harder the lobbies. But on top of that, I play with some pretty good players when we team up. And they drag me into some of the most difficult lobbies that I can imagine. People scoring over 100 kills on hard point, that sort of thing. So everybody gets hard lobbies. Everybody gets easy lobbies. There you can see that the 14.3 degrees per second really didn't slow Grandpa down as far as the hip fire maximum. So I, w I was a bit questioning why the crosshairs were so big when I was moving, and then I remembered it was 14.5 degrees because I was expecting that 1.4. There's Statue of Caesar going in the going into rubble. You know, we lost that last game, so maybe they gave us a little easier lobby this time. I didn't detect these players being any easier, though. And some people say, oh, I don't see sliding, I don't see jumping. Well, sometimes, A, I cut, cut that out, and B, so what? So what? And you think a player is good because they jump? Well, Grandpa jumps a lot when he has an SMG, and AR, and make them good. Or because they slide. Yeah, that guy slid, and Grandpa, he's willing to give up his life to get the tag because the enemy couldn't get his tag. This version of shipment is just as bloody as any other. Oh, somebody coming from there. See, it never takes more than two shots to gack someone. Most of the time, it's one shot to the upper torso to the head. You got to try it, man. You're going to love it. And when you do try it, let me know in comments what you think. This thing's a hand cannon. When I say hand cannon, I mean shooting from the hip. As always, I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe. Helps me, helps the family. Did okay. Well, at least we won one. Cheers, and as always, peace to you.